On the 18th of September 1964, a young man answered a divine calling. It was a calling that would take him on a remarkable journey from faith, trials and triumphs. Transferred to Kwabing, he began his ministry with a heart full of hope and a steadfast commitment to serve God and his community. I was called into a full time ministry church of 1964. My first station uh, was uh, Kwabing. I was welcome at Kwabing on the 18th September 1964. From there, I was stationed there for two years. Then trans I was transferred to uh, Agogo in 1966. Uh, there I was there for almost 10 years before uh, being transferred to Tema. Then from Tema, I was called to Nigeria. From 1980 to 1982, he laid the groundwork for a larger mission that awaited him across national borders. Yeah, I was there for 13 years as the first pioneer minister to Nigeria in 1982. I was there for 13 years. A land that will become a significant chapter in his life and ministry. Apostle Moses Ladiju, I am Adam Fupa. Now, I will be a Yabakan classical Pentecostal. Yabakan say, Oberma OCP OCTA, Pa, Messiano, nineteen eighty two, na Midisofo or Ebri. The Honor Mimun say, San and Eire. Ah, Eddie Kaya or Warren, when you are my friend, the Honor Wolfie. In the nature, say, if he's a bit in the debut of bar, or my bobo, if I any fee, never a young fan, no, no, a muye drew. Namakai pa, a person ladied you, or you'll be a walk, I'm a sorry pa. Wafra never ministry him, not no questioning. We have been on many journeys, stations, we Ghana, we have been in Guatemala, and so on. Other places we have been, we have been to Nigeria. We have been to Nigeria. We have been to Nigeria. We have Nigeria. We have been to 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 Ne ifi osmafu Moses Ladija. The Church of Pentecost has existed in Nigeria for so many years, with a number of missionaries leading the spread of the church in the populous nation. In terms of the first missionary to Nigeria, Apostle Moses Oladejo, he came in uh, 1982 uh, to in 1995. Then the second missionary is our dear Apostle uh, Ringwell Atu Addison. He came after him. Then later, uh, Apostle James Smith uh, Jima also came in 2000 and to 2005. Uh, Apostle Patrick uh, Kinsley Eni also came in later. Then the, after Apostle uh, Kins, uh, Kinsley Eni, then we have the first uh, call in Nigeria minister in the person of Apostle Fini Obiri Yebua, who came in as a national head by then. 2017, by the grace of God, we became the head with my dear wife, uh, Joanna Ikua Ajayi Bade. We have six areas in Nigeria today by the grace of God, namely uh, Jos, Oshubu, Abuja, Asaba, uh, Ibadan, uh, Lagos West, 
and Lagos East. Then we have 160 uh, assemblies. We have uh, 160 assembly. The entire population of the church as of now, half year is 10,300 total membership. Jesu ye, o ye ni no mi o si ye ni no ni na. What a great privilege to say something about our dear daddy, the first missionary of Church of Pentecost to Nigeria. I mean, our Nigeria, in the person of Apostle Moses Oladejo, as we celebrate the 90th birthday of him. Our uh, dear mommy, Uba in York, congratulations also. And I say, well done. So we are stronger behind our daddy. And that I testified about him that our dear daddy, as a man of God, the man, man of the word of God, is a man of faith and is very, very prayerful. Is a man of principle who does not bend to left or right and is ready to defend the gospel, especially the doctrine, so far as the church is concerned. What I know about him, if you try to minister on heresy, wise is dead. In fact, he will not call you aside, <laughs> he will correct you instantly and put you at the right path of the gospel. So that is a man I know. In fact, he has been a father to us as Church of Pentecost in Nigeria and he continues. The church is going to move. It needs your support. Isaac Kwejo Adeti. I worked with Apostle Moses Ladejo in Lagos, Nigeria as the second missionary attache from 1992 until he was transferred to Ghana. What I knew about him was that he was fair, he was affable, he was diligent in everything he did, he had an eye for excellence and good things. For God's work he was so dedicated and compassionate, loved everybody. And to cut a long story short, to say he was a good man. I worked with him for a very short period of time as an officer and a probationary overseer before he left the shores of Nigeria for Ghana in September 1995. Happy to be one of the two officers he called into the full-time ministry of the church before his departure. And incidentally, the two of us happened to be the first indigenous ministers of the church to be called into the high office of an apostle and a prophet in Nigeria. I observed few qualities of leadership in him while serving under him. First, he was a man of prayer. Anytime you visit him, he will receive you with prayer. And when you are going or leaving, he will see you off with prayer. He was somebody who depended absolutely on the Holy Spirit in whatever he did, especially when ordaining leaders into officership. He would never assign somebody a responsibility without first testing him. The last thing I learned of him was that he was not a, a shepherd who would run away from his flock. But we say strike the shepherd and the floor was scattered. We went for a crusade and he couldn't do it. 
there was a heavy downpour. Everybody started running away. But our daddy stood with us, stayed with us throughout the whole period. And there was heavy downpour. At the end of the day, prayed with us and closed the session. Apostle likely to retired. He had a long experience with him in Nigeria. Uh, he was transferred to Nigeria as the first national head uh, in Nigeria. That was 1982. When he came, we were in Ife and he was in Ibadan. Unfortunately, not too long after he had come, in 1983, Ghana must go. So Apostle Ladijo was almost left alone. At that time, we hadn't met. I was in Ife. My, myself and my wife were in Ife. Something pricked me that I should go and look for Apostle. So one day, I called him and he gave me the direction. And I drove from Ife to Ibadan and met him. But when I saw the situation, it was so deplorable. I think he was left with only one elder called Elder Achia. One elder Achia and a wife. And uh, it was simply miserable. He didn't know what to do. But I encouraged him that it was a Saturday, that the following day, that Sunday, he should come to Ife. At that time, we had started a small assembly there on our own. And indeed, he did come. And when he came and he saw the number, he was encouraged and decided to be coming often. But why we were able to get that number was that in Ife, the Ghanaians there, most of the Ghanaians there were teachers. So they didn't leave. We were lucky. And we were living also on a campus, university campus, a Ife university campus as a lecturer. So since then, he used to come to Ife and we had to pray all night prayers with his late wife. Uh, it was quite, 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 quite interesting actually. That's how the church started to move because we had a, quite a number of people in Ife. And uh, with time, I think the church started growing when people started coming. And in Ife, at that time, we were meeting in my house. My house was a meeting place. Later on, we had to move to a, a kiosk, I would say, because people couldn't feel too free to come to the campus because of, because of security situations. But Pastor still was coming, despite the problem that he was facing. He, he didn't even have a car at that time. At that time, he had to come with a wife in a taxi. It was. They were very really difficult times. Until later on, uh, the head office provided them with a 504 vehicle. We remember your stay with us in Nigeria, the time of visitation, the support, and the, the way we had our all nights together, and the fellowship that we shared like brother and sister relationship. We thank God, though things were difficult, but we stood in. And you never you lost courage. But Pastor Lord, you know, really, really, really did hard work. He really, because it wasn't easy. The work in Nigeria was not easy at all, unlike Ghana. It wasn't easy in terms of uh, even offering and that kind of thing. It wasn't like in Ghana here. People wouldn't want to, because when they do offering, they change it to, from Nara to city side, they think they are spending so much, and they wouldn't want to do that. So it wasn't easy for him, but he persisted. And by the grace of God, now we will see what the church has done in Nigeria. We give glory to God, and we say, are you called to a retired apostle for the work he did as a pioneer pastor in Nigeria? It wasn't easy, but he really, really, was able to wade through and then 
really, I would say that he's has succeeded from what we are seeing right now. He has really succeeded and we thank God for his life. However, his time in Nigeria was marked by profound personal loss. On the 8th of May 1987, he lost his first wife, Mrs. Comfort Asantua Ladijo. My late wife, Mrs. Asantua, was the one who introduced me to Christ. That was when I was born. Then uh, I would say I was not a Christian, and I was introduced to Christ through her and. Through her, I got to know the Lord Jesus. And uh, we were called in the ministry. Uh, as I've already said, 1964. There we were later transferred to Nigeria, where he, uh, he was called to do me. She was called to do me in 1987. Despite this heart-wrecking loss, his faith remained unshaken. By the grace of God, he found love again and remarried Mrs. Rahel Ladijo on the 11th of February, 1989. When the evening proposed to me, I was looking at... Uh, in fact, I even refused. I refused. Because when I look at the age difference, I said, why should I marry? Such an old man or somebody who is older than me. But uh, because it was in the plan of the Lord, the Lord did it. And in fact, I've not regretted marrying. Marry. Mama Rahel became in contact uh, in our marriage uh, from, I think, February 2nd, February 1989. 1989. Yes. 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 Uh, then I was called to um, uh, Ghana. Ghana, back to uh, Ghana. Then our retirement came on uh, in 1999. What fun, my memory is so bad. My friend, my friend. Returning to Ghana in 1995, he continued his ministry in Cape Coast until his retirement in 1999. His leadership and guidance were felt by all who crossed his path. His contributions as an executive member from 1993 to 1998 and as the national PEMM leader from 1996 showcased his unwavering dedication to his faith and his people. Over retirement, 25 years, I was on the first men's fellowship leader, I am Pemem. On the other day, the first, no, he is the man who was the first Pemem national Pemem leader. For instance, our transfer, no, 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 a bar, Cape Coast. I have no belief in any juma. I've been there for four years. Now, so we are far now. We are in Pemem. Leader, or shall see one Nigeria and son of other betri also a waha. Into a kamana, the image and the glory of God, na eja ladi ju udimwa kutimpa. Ono na ote hone eji slogan simende zibai. Ah, it rests a yejina swa in the man. The movie kia etu mukura yebedi hona fishi abi. Na ladi ju andoma. I worked under Apostle Mrs. Ladijo when I retired in the Cape Coast area. I observed that this man of God is 
very, very disciplined. He doesn't eat anything, everything. He's very picky, juicy in what he eats. And he doesn't eat any type of oil. He eats only palm oil. He's a prayerful man. And above all, he doesn't nurse grudges against anybody. This is what I've learned from this man of God, which I think is a contributive factor to his long life. He was posted to Nigeria and he worked in Nigeria for 13 years. 13 years. What? Why? Was he forgotten? Why? But you never hear this man complaining. It will never come out. It never came out from his mouth during his sermons, during his conversation, everything. This is why I learned that this man does not begrudge anybody. He's free in spirit. Uh, my name is Reverend Christian Atinka Bopola, retired of the Church of Pentecost. My godfather, Apostle Moses Ladijo, retired. Yeah. Um, I became a Christian Christian. He actually nurtured me, brought me out in Nigeria. I lived with him for about six months, uh, coaching me, training me, and uh, took me to several places, wherever he opened churches. I was with him. Uh, I want to be thankful to, to God and to him because through him that I am, I am what I am today. Uh, he's a man uh, who is very generous, very caring, very prayerful. At the time I lived with him, he could be in those praying hours, hours, hours on end. And I think I learned a lot from that. I remember in the early 90s, when you came to Holland, you were executive member of Church of Pentecost International. And I really felt your anointing, your resilience, being a man of integrity, your loyalty, standing firm with the word and principles of the word of God. And one statement that moved my heart, those days, the church in Amsterdam and Holland is moving from glory to glory. And as being the leader of the church for the whole nation and the Benelux, there are certain things happening. And these are your words. Let me mimic your words. Amsterdam, I'm warning you. Amsterdam, I'm warning you. Amsterdam, I'm warning you. It has been a word that pierced my heart and guide me, prune me till now. You want the whole church, what they are doing towards me. And you said, they should be careful. This is the spiritual father we have. A man who loves all, a man who stands for the faith, and a man who needs to be celebrated. I got to know him when he was transferred from Tema to Nigeria as national head. We went for a conference in Nigeria and that was when I met him and his wife Rahel. They received us very well in Nigeria. I remember after some time he was called back to Ghana where he became the first PMM leaders. When I look back at his life and the 25 years of his life after retirement with Mama Rahel, I admire the couple so much and I always thank God for his life and what God used him to accomplish. His sacrifice, dedication, and life are what moved me to promise and finally decided to celebrate him on his birthday. I say, 
all COP Nigerian members should join me celebrate him. It was under the leadership of our Apostle Ladejo that I was nominated to become the first national deacon of the church. I then became his right-hand man. We were moving from meeting to meeting and traveling across the country. One thing I've noticed with him is he has, uh, he's a true man of God with a deep love for people and he's also very transparent when it comes to issues of um, leadership. A few times we had to travel to Ghana and we got very intimate. He discussed uh, personal issues with me and also family issues together with the church's um, development. I must say that he's a man to work with because he liked to engage and also seek ideas and make his contributions. One of the remarkable things that I can say of this man is he is down to earth. He, anytime he visited us in Lagos, our home was a, a transit protest for the church. The visiting apostles from Ghana and pastors were uh, lodged there before continuing to the national headquarters in Ibadan at the beginning of the church in Nigeria. Today, as we celebrate his 90th birthday, we honor a man whose life has been a testament to faith, resilience, and unwavering commitment to his calling. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear daddy. Happy birthday to you. To my amazing dad, Apostle Moses Ladijo. On your 90th birthday, I don't know what I did to deserve an amazing father like you. I love you so much, Daddy. Words can't describe what you mean to me. Without you, I could never be the person I am today. Daddy, I may have outgrown your laps, but I know I will never outgrow a place in your heart. And you will always be the man that I will look up to. I can't count the sacrifices you have made for me. I know it's not easy for a man to raise a child and there is no way I can pay you back. Daddy, it doesn't matter how far I go in life. I will always be your little girl and you will always be my dad. Daddy, on this special day, may God Almighty shower you with his blessings today and forever. May your life be filled with good health, happiness, and peace. And may God grant you many more years of health, of good health and happiness, and the strength to continue being an amazing father as you are. I love you, Daddy. I love you so much, Daddy from your lovely daughter, Esther Baba Ladijo. Love you, Daddy. Happy birthday once again. We love you and we appreciate you so much. Hey, Grandpa. Happy birthday. Grandpa. Happy birthday. Grandpa. I love you. Okay, I love you. Happy. Can you blow a kiss? <gasps> 90th birthday, the Adromna Bafumpa. Yen yen kambu mnde nyami asi. Ne yen she nyami enu nyam. When you are ordinary, but more by ye. Apostle Moses Ladid, you will be catcher. Nin check when you are medum and tinnum. Yamim boa. No one kind that win him won't be read the win him, and young queen him, and for more wound a woof ye. May I woo who da a young cosupo, woo who was a dream. 
na enke ka unko nyame enim wo unko nyimzim man the image and the glory of god man be strong man you are firmly established when i would buy i don't know nti me entina so na engine hoda daddy we love you and we celebrate we join you to celebrate this 90th birthday you are so dear to us and we pray that the lord god who have kept you up to this day as the yoruba man will say igba odun igba odun odun kan ba un na se ma ka he mean literally is that his years 200 years shall be one year so when you multiply 200 by 90 you know what it is baba agbadura opo e pe fun wa ajinde ara yi si ma je aisan oni ko ni mu yin di male ajinde ara ma je pe se ndagba ogu olorun o ma tan lori yin eyin pelu mama wa rahel oluwa to pe yin to duo ti yin a ma wa pelu gbogbo wa oruko jesus that the god really bless you god continue to strengthen you may god bless you and your family we praise god as you are celebrating your 90 years it is the doing of the lord it is God who has sustained you up to this time and he wants you to enjoy the fruit of your labor. And I thank God for Rahel being in your life. He has been very supportive and encouraged. We thank God that you are still alive to see us all growing. And all what you are saying that we wish you a very, very successful blissful healthy long yes as he celebrated his 90th birthday i wish him all the best uh, i pray that the lord will add more years to his years and he will grow and uh, good health very good health and long life uh, i pray that shall be well with him you will not be sick. You will not lie down sick in any form or shape. And that the Lord's blessings will continue to be upon him. And the training he has given us will always remember him with, them, with all that he has equipped us with. I really appreciate him. And I thank God for his life. In this your 90th birthday, May the Lord increase you more. May the Lord give you more life for us to tap into your unction, for us to tap into your wisdom, knowledge, and for us to tap into your parenthood. On behalf of the whole church community, we just want to say, we love you, Daddy. May the Lord bless you. More life, more life more life a birthday message from toby to daddy to my dad my father and dearest friend thank you for always being there for me you will always be the first hero i have ever loved the first honey i ever held you are uh, amazing. I am so lucky to have you as my father. That you are the one who brings me joy. I wish that your good, your God-given wisdom will help nature me to become an apostle in the future, just as you have been. 
And I want to use this day to celebrate him for his unconditional love, his wisdom and strength and care that he has given to our family. I said a happy birthday to him. May God grant him long life and prosperity and with good health. I must say that up to date, Apostle Ladijo has become part of my family or I am part of his family. We move, uh, very, we move on very well and we also relate very well when it comes to issues of concern. So I am recognized as his first son and he gives me that um, role in which I also play to the glory of God. On this occasion, Apostle, as you mark your 90th birthday, um, the Lord has brought you thus far. We recognize your uh, humility and service to God. And I know that you are a man who thinks deeply about the future of this church. Your messages are always centered on the future. Dashi Asori. And that is what you have also inherited from our forefathers. And you have kept the faith. I pray that as you celebrate this year, may the Lord add more years to your age with good health and fulfillment. I pray that God would look upon all the good works that you have done and increase you, make you greater and greater. I also want to pay tribute to, glowing tribute to uh, Mrs. Rahel Adejo, who has been the backbone of our dear father, Apostle Adejo. She has played a very good role. Now, um, I, I was involved in that marriage ceremony. I cannot deny the fact that Apostle Ladejo, before marrying uh, this young lady, but went through a lot of turmoil. Uh, I will say that it's one of the turning points in his life because somewhere against even the marriage. But I stood firm to support because I knew that he had prayed and God revealed to him. Apostle, you have gotten to that level where it was make and break. But you stood firm, and Rahel today has become the bone of your bones and the flesh of your flesh. She has discharged her duties creditably. Auntie Rahel, we are proud of you, soft mommy. God bless you for keeping faith with our daddy and for the role you have played as a mother and for standing in the gap. Oh, Apostle Ladij. Ambassadors. <laughs> No mira, mira udi o nantiet bebe me kasa ne mawa woda papa. Na me enko swa entu onkwanem. A million wishes to my amazing husband. I am that lucky woman who has found a best friend and a husband in the same person. Thank you for always being there for me. I know I am not perfect, but you make me feel like the most beautiful and hilarious and special woman in the world. I am so lucky to be loved by you. Thank you for your endless gestures. I want to thank you for being patient with me, even when 
I am, even when I don't admit I am wrong. Over the years, you have taught everyone around you what it means to be alive. And you have proven your point by staying alive for so long and being healthier than ever. I wish that you keep doing so, so you can reach hundred. Have a fabulous birthday, honey. Love you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for being there for me. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah.